Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the next project that we have on the go. So next project is what I got in this lovely box. It is awesome. Now I've already opened it, so this isn't an official unboxing video, but uh, let's open this up and see what's inside. But before we do that, guys, um, if this is your first time finding the channel, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, uh, hit that subscribe button down below, and uh, when you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos so you don't miss anything. Let's dive into what's in this box. All right, guys, so as I've mentioned, I have opened this up already, but uh, I will show you what's inside. So... I contacted the guys at Sky Candy and uh, got them to ship me some lights. And I'll tell you shortly what these lights are for. You might be able to figure it out. All right, guys, so in the box we have two digital switches, okay? And uh, these are awesome. And I've already played around with these lights. And then we've got two of those lights and we also have a third light so if you haven't figured out what this is for it is for my tutor so i put this light in about a year ago and it is pretty dim and lackluster unless you're looking for it you definitely don't notice it on uh, on the landing approach Looks cool on the ground, but uh, you don't even see it. So I've got a light that I'm going to put in the nose. That's what that third one's for. And then we've got one that's going on each wing. Now the Tudor actually has a, a little section that you can cut out for lights. Um, I'll show you guys that on the wing in a little bit. But um, that's the project. That's what's happening. Very excited about this. Now, a couple cool things to note about the Sky Candy lights is 4.8 volts only. Um, max volts on this is 6, um, so you cannot run or you don't want to run. It clearly says in the instructions, um, do not use over 6 volts. Now, I've talked to the guys at Sky Candy, and basically it doesn't get any brighter if you go over 4.8 volts. So... I've, uh, I've fired this up at 5 volts, and guys, these things are nuts how bright they are. All right, guys, so I'm not a huge fan of having, like, super scale planes. Um, you know, I like them to be daily flyers. I like them to be flyable on a regular basis and not have to worry about all the little scale details. But uh, I feel like these three landing lights are going to be awesome on the plane. Uh, maybe in the future I might add some of the marker lights, but uh, I, I just like the thought of having these lights while you're landing visible during the daylight. So without further ado, it's going to take a little bit of engineering on my side, but the nose should be fairly straightforward, but the uh, the main wing um, uh, lights, we actually have to cut into the wing, guys. Uh, we've got to cut into the wing, we've got to reinforce the wing, and we have to create a little backing plate. We also have to create a lens cover. So this is going to be something new, uh, something exciting that uh, I'm looking forward to. Anyways, let's hop in and uh, see what we can do with this. Okay, guys, so I figured I would just show you kind of briefly how uh, how these things work. Um, so the dig digital switch goes into your RX, your, your receiver, and you've got your light output and your battery output okay so when we take this digital switch which right now is powered by a two cell lipo uh, that's what my receivers sorry my receiver is powered with a two cell lipo now we're going to put this digital switch into the throttle channel so nothing happens on the lights i'm throttling up okay nothing's happening and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that same two-cell LiPo, uh, run through a, a voltage regulator. We are going to be, I think, I'm going to be using a uh, Castle Creations voltage regulator, uh, just because I have this, a CCBEC Pro. Uh, this is quite an old unit, but I'll probably end up using this in the Tudor. Um, this one also works as well, too. And um, anyways, we'll see what happens. But now what we'll do is we'll plug this into the battery. So this is outputting 5.5 volts, 
Okay, we've got nothing for the light, so I'm going to throttle up. And boom, holy man, those are bright. <laughs> and it even says, I can't see right now, but it says, uh, make sure you cover your eyes while uh, installing and testing our lights. <laughs> holy crap, those are bright. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's... Uh, that's the Sky Candy Light. Super impressive units. Um, so anyways, those are going to be extremely visible on the front of the, uh, the Tudor. And uh, looking forward to that. So next step is I need to, to mold a piece of plastic, a lens cover, to the front of the wing. And that's something I've never done before. So before we go any further with cutting into the wing, we need to make sure that we can get some lenses made. All right, guys, so here is the cutout for the uh, landing light. So you can see the, the outline there. Um, so that's where we have to cut into the wing. Now, obviously, you're taking, in my opinion, a fair amount of strength out of the wing. So when we do cut that out, we are actually going to line that with, uh, with some carbon plywood reinforcement. Now, just so you have an idea what's on the inside, um, wing tube is right there. There's a main rib for the wing right here. So it... Uh, pretty easy actually we probably won't need to put anything here we'll just come off this way and then come back to the wing and uh, so it should be a fairly simple reinforcement process um, inside there so not too worried about that my only concern at this point is getting a reflector that actually um, fits around this spot now of course it's great because we have the wing to mold it to now I've got a couple different materials I'm going to try now, first thing we could try is the uh, the actual Sky Candy uh, box. It actually says in there, um, cut this plastic box to use as your light uh, light lens cover. So, anyways, that's an option. Um, it's a little bit thin, but it's probably sufficient. Now, I've got this uh, kind of Tupperware-y Rubbermaid container from the uh, the dollar store. We're going to try that. And as a last resort, I've got this old canopy from, uh, from a Skymaster F-18, which uh, is a little bit thicker material, but I'm not too sure how it would mold or bend. So um, the last time I used this, I used it to mix some uh, turpentine and uh, oil paints to uh, weather an F-18. So that's what I've used it for. But uh, anyways, guys, so that's what we're going to do next. Um, when I have success with this, I'll show you my process because I need to make a few of these and I'm going to make some extras as well. So when I heat this up, guys, you'll kind of see it kind of shrink. And then I just keep going with the heat and I find it, uh, it works really well. So I'll show you kind of what, what I'm talking about here. So it's kind of shrinking and molding. Okay, so we've got the top part done. I'm just going to hold that for a little bit and let it cure or cool off, I should say. Okay, so now that that's cool, what I'm actually going to do is flip the wing over and uh, then we'll heat up this side and pull it the rest of the way around. And there we go guys, that's basically the finished product. So uh, that worked out absolutely phenomenal. I'm very, very happy with the way that that worked out. So this uh, making of these reflectors or the lens covers was the biggest step for me. Um, now, of course, you might be different where cutting into the wing is going to be a big stress for you. But uh, making a suitable uh, lens cover or light cover was was my big issue. So with that done, now I am uh, quite confident in cutting into the wing and uh, proceeding with this. All right, guys, point of no return. 
So I'm going to use my little uh, pull saws here and uh, basically cut the uh, this area out. So it's a pretty simple process, just following the grooves, obviously. And uh, I'll show you the final result when I get this wing done. This is the right wing, first one I'm starting on. All right, guys, there we go. So cutouts done. Okay, guys, so I think I've got all the substructure uh, built. So that, that's not the mount, uh, mounting for the light. That's just the support for the wing. So um, I'll pull that piece of cardboard out. So that's just my template that I made. I actually kind of started off, took me a couple different tries, but I started off using the, the piece from the wing, uh, tracing that out and then uh, modifying it a little bit. And this is my final piece. So that one actually worked uh, really well. And, um, and then the other piece inside the wing is that uh, eighth inch aircraft ply in there so that also the the bottom is straight so the bottom uh, which would be the top skin of the wing is straight and then the uh, in your guys's picture the top of that wood has a nice angle on it so that's what I have decided to do for the substructure uh, to reinforce the wing and uh, I think that should work well um, yeah, boxes everything out, and uh, I think sh that should work just perfect. Um, I was thinking about doing a piece all the way back to the wing tube, but I don't think that's really necessary. I mean, when that's glued in place, this is going to be quite strong, I think. So uh, So once I'm going to make another set of these for the other wing. Once these are glued in, uh, it's pretty late tonight. I'm going to try and get these glued in tonight. And then tomorrow, what I'm going to do is make... Um, so there's going to be a balsa inset piece that goes in here and uh, that will slip in probably just lightly glued in place and that's uh, that's what I'm planning on doing so I think the way I want to do that is I want to have the balsa just shy of the wing skin and the reason for that is I want the plastic to actually sit on top of the balsa like that and then I can use trim tape to uh, to tape that closed and I think that should be a nice clean look the alternative is we can go like this and we could screw this down um, I don't think I'm a big fan of that I might change my mind, but uh, I like the tape idea. We can get a little bit of red trim tape and, and trim that out, and I think it would look uh, just perfect. So, um, yeah, that's that's my thinking right now. Anyways, I'm going to cut out um, some more of these guys, and we'll uh, try and get these glued up tonight. Okay, guys, we've got our pieces all made here. So I made a copy of um, this one, and then I made two of the... Uh, the uh, rounded pieces so I'm um, gonna glue these in now um, for this I am definitely going to use a long um, high saw nozzle and uh, just so I got good access to the area I don't often use the nozzles but in a situation like this it's uh, definitely worth it so uh, glue these in and I'll show you guys the finished product on each wing so we'll do the uh, this is the left wing first and uh, let's get her glued in. Okay guys, so there's a shot of it from the uh, wing root side. And there's a shot of it from the leading edge side. So I think it turned out good. Um, oh, one little secret for you guys. Um, especially in a situation like this where you've got that wood um, sitting and there's really nothing holding it in place. So when... Uh, so they actually put little little backers in there so it uh, holds everything in place and uh, obviously gives them, gives them some backing to rest it against. So um, in the situation like this, what I did was actually use a little bit of CA, just two little dots on this piece here and uh, basically just CA it in place and that allows you to uh, 
you know, put your glue in there nice and easy and be able to tool it with your finger and stuff like that uh, so it doesn't move. So just a little uh, pro tip for you. So this wing's done. Obviously, we have to be careful with it. We want it to uh, cure and not move. So we're going to take this wing and we're going to set it aside. And uh, what I actually might do to these wings is I've got a couple little repairs on the leading edge here to do. Um, so I might just get those done while I've got the high saw mixed. The other wing has a couple other chips out of it. So all I'm going to do there is put some uh, tape right here, put a bit of high saw in there, and uh, let that cure, and then I'll be able to uh, sand it down and just touch it up with some white paint. So might as well do that while we're here. I did add some uh, carbon cord to this part right here. You can barely see it in this one. Um, but it's buried in the high saw there. On the other one, it's more more visible. But um, just because there's a fairly large gap near the front of that uh, leading edge of that piece, so that's why I added the carbon cord in there. Um, and I also did this section right here as well too. And uh, hopefully that works out and we are able to fix the leading edge of that wing. So guys, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll continue this tomorrow um, and see how uh, how this all worked out once it's cured. Okay guys, it is the next day and uh, this is cured extremely well. Obviously, it's cured like it's supposed to, but um, this entire area is a lot more rigid than it was before. So I'll try and pick this up on camera, but um, you know, generally with a, a plane like this and you can see it on this wing, you know, there's some flex in, uh, in areas between the ribs, okay? But this area now, with that reinforcement is extremely stiff. So I think that worked out really well. Good plan. All right, my fill-in points at the leading edge and the root here worked out well. Um, it'll take a little bit of sanding and we have a little spot to fill right there as well. But um, that'll be a nice touch-up that I've been waiting to do for quite some time, so. All right, guys, next thing to do is build the box out that's gonna go in this area. Um, all I'm gonna do is probably trace out the wing like this. Uh, trace it out and then we're gonna have to cut on the other side of that line um, the amount of um, depth we want inset to uh, to inset the reflector so alright guys so I'm just doing some trial runs here so this is what it looks like when you trace it out and then I just uh, kinda picked a, an amount here and cut this one out I might redo this one and make it a little bit less uh, less inset. All right, guys, there we go. So those pieces are cut. Uh, nothing's been glued yet, but um, just wanted to show you what uh, what we had going on. So fairly easy process. It's definitely nice working with balsa because it's not expensive. It's easy to cut with an exacto knife, but uh, I think that worked out well. So. Um, Anyways, I'm going to glue these together, and uh, I'm thinking what I might do for mounting this is I might uh, put a screw on each side, so just have some backing glued in the wing, and just goes with a little servo screw, one on each side. But uh, I'm going to glue this together. What I'm probably going to do is just uh, spot glue it in the wing like that, take it out, and then we'll install the, uh, the corner pieces for support, and we'll see how that all works out. All right, guys, so the uh, the insert that's made out of balsa is all complete. I still have to come up with some sort of uh, light mount, but um, that's all done, fits beautifully in there. And uh, I think this is fairly common knowledge, but uh, if you want to strengthen balsa, all you do is put some thin CA on it, and uh, you can spray some kicker on it, but it does absorb the thin CA right away. And, uh, oops, it... Uh, it does make it a lot stronger. I need to glue that back together. We do have whoops on cameras here at the lighter side as well. So um, cut these uh, pieces of basswood. So basswood is like in between ply and balsa. It's like a little bit higher density uh, balsa. And we're gonna use some five minute high saw and just glue those in. Now the point of those is so we can put a screw in each side and that's gonna hold the light reflector in and or the the whole lighting system in and then it's removable if we ever need to take it out 
and there's one going on that side as well too. So it's just backing. All right guys, so I glued in the backing with five minute high saw. That's uh, pretty much already cured or cured enough to hold it. Um, so I, I taped the reflector on and then all I did was um, draw my Sharpie line right on the edge. So when I cut this, basically I want that Sharpie line to disappear and uh, that should inset it nicely in the cutout. So we're gonna cut that, hopefully that works out well and uh, we'll see what happens. All right guys, that worked absolutely beautifully. I am super impressed with how this worked out. Um, so I cut it too big. Uh, so what I mean by that is I, I stayed big of all the sides and then basically just spent a lot of time slowly trimming it out so it's inset. Now we don't have the insert put in there yet, but um, this thing fits beautifully in there and uh, I think I am very impressed with how that worked out. So I haven't done anything with the other wing yet. We're only doing this wing first and uh, very impressed with how that worked out. So I think it's going to look awesome. Um, that's it. So it fits perfectly in there. All right, and there's a quick shot of everything uh, temporarily just put in place. Uh, this is sitting perfectly flush with the uh, the wing surface. Um, absolutely awesome. So this is going to get painted all black. All right, guys, so what I ended up doing here was actually cutting the package. Um, that's what the package looks like. So I cut the package, flipped it over. Uh, cut this thin piece off and glued it down and that's going to provide the spacer for the actual light. So I think that worked out quite well. I just glued that down with some CA. So I'm going to paint this black and uh, once that's done we're going to get this installed, screwed in place and uh, we will uh, hopefully get this wing done very soon. Okay, so reflector is installed. Uh, there might have been a better way to do it, but uh, I'm actually happy with those screw heads. Um, I'm going to paint them black, and uh, once they're painted black and the lens covers on, they should be almost uh, almost invisible. Yeah, they're not going to be hardly visible at all. So, Anyways, guys, very, very happy with this, uh, this result. Um, all I did was use my pin vise and uh, just drill out those holes put a little bit of CA on my screw heads and screwed them in. So that worked good, happy with that. Um, did my, uh, my light leads up. So this is the lead that's gonna come to the wing right here. And then we're gonna have the, the other plug coming from the fuselage that just goes along with the bundle there. And uh, nice and simple. All right, guys, all I did to install it was uh, put a drop of uh, medium CA on there, insert it, twist it a little bit, and uh, it is nice and solid. So if we do need to get that light out, the easiest way is going to be to pull the screws out and just pull the entire uh, insert piece, piece uh, out. So absolutely awesome. Uh, next thing to do is to install the reflector or the, sorry, the lens cover. All right, guys, so we just used a trusty bent screwdriver and installed four dots of uh, shoe goop on each corner. And I'm just gonna put the reflector on now and uh, see what it looks like. All right, there we go. So the nice thing about the shoe goop is this probably won't pick it up in the light just cause the, the black, but um, the shoe goop doesn't uh, make the, uh, the material craze or um, fog like CA does and uh, it will be removable if we ever have to so next thing I'm going to do is take this red trim tape and um, I'm going to trim this wing out I'm going to start on the top bottom and then I'll do these uh, these pieces here so we'll see how that goes and I'll show you uh, the final product all right guys and there is the final product um, I think it looks good with the uh, the tape like that the reflector inset. Uh, I'm happy with the way that that all turned out. All right, guys, just tidying up the uh, the other wing here. Um, everything is going together really nicely. Now I'm just putting the plane together and just checking the uh, the front section here where I filled in those areas with high saw, and that looks absolutely awesome. There used to be the big uh, 
chips in the wing there so that uh, it's gonna work out good so there's the uh, the right wing installed next thing I'm gonna focus on is getting this nose light out all right guys we got the old light out uh, it was pretty straightforward it just took a hammer and a flat screwdriver and knocked her out uh, new lights installed essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be um, teeing off the uh, the retract battery which is a massive battery it's 2100 milliamp three cell life battery to the castle creations uh, BEC Pro uh, we're gonna have a toggle switch in between the battery and the BEC Pro so we can turn that on and off so it's not draining the battery and uh, these are gonna be hooked up to the battery leads so pretty straightforward the wiring is what the wiring is so uh, I'm not gonna go through a lot of that stuff but um, uh, once I get it complete, um, ideally the switch I think is going to be in this area for the on-off. Uh, the BEC Pro is probably going to be right back there. But I'm just going to get the wiring done up and uh, once that's finished I'll show you guys the final product and the lights uh, on. Alright guys, I know the camera won't fully capture this but holy man those things are bright. And maybe this will help but... Uh... There's a shot with all the garage lights off. <laughs> Jeez, and this light here, this uh, left wing light is actually shining kind of on the, uh, on the workbench, so man. All right guys, so lights are installed. I'm actually worried that I won't be able to land the plane because these lights are so bright. Um, Hopefully that's not an issue, but uh, anyways, I'll go through this with you to show you how everything's set up. So we've got, uh, you guys have seen the right landing light, left landing light, nose landing light. So those are all done. Um, so basically what I have set up here, and yes, this is an absolute rat's nest. We've got our Castle Creations BEC Pro here, which is is uh, hooked up to the battery, which this is a 2100 milliamp three cell life battery. The only thing that this powers previously was the uh, the landing gear and now it powers uh, the landing lights as well too. So that's how it's set up. I just made a, a little splitter off the plug in there and that's run to this on off switch here. Now the reason for the on off switch is Without that on off switch, even with the uh, receiver off, you can maybe see the little red light on the BEC Pro. Um, it's going to drain battery because it's always hooked up. So that's what the on off switch is for, is basically a battery disconnect. Uh, from the BEC Pro, we've got two output leads. One goes to the nose gear, one goes to the, uh, the rear gear. I still have to clean up all these wires. And then we've got a splitter. Uh, going to each wing so one lead to each each side so that's how we're all set up it is paired with the gear channel so when I do flick my gear up uh, the landing lights turn off all right guys so that is the installation of the sky candy landing lights on my Carf Tutor um, very very impressed with these lights they are extremely bright uh, low voltage. They are absolutely awesome. If you're thinking about getting a landing light setup, I definitely check these ones out. Uh, they are definitely great. Um, I'll put the uh, contact information and links down below uh, on more information on these lights. But uh, if you do have any questions, make sure you list them down below. You can also shoot me an email as well too, and I'll do my best to answer any questions for you. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, if you have any video ideas, make sure you list them down below. Love to hear video ideas from you guys. If this is your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And lastly, give the video a thumbs up. Totally appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.